hello. How about that? <laughs> a little bit better. I love the T-shirt. You could just you have to show show that off a little bit. <laughs> okay, so the the reason for that is I did not read your email, Diane, that you sent on Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, I thought you might enjoy that. I was uh, on vacation. This is a, so cool. This is actually an old Think Geek shirt. If folks remember Think Geek, mm -hmm. I'm just going to share the whole screen. There's nothing too private. You might see yourself for a minute. Does everyone see that uh, screen share? Yep. Yeah, it just says you are sharing. There you go. There's Justin. Okay, so just as a background, because there are a lot of different people, um, I've worked uh, since the Linux 2, 2.0 days on various different Linuxes. Um, and currently, I do work at Red Hat and I'm focused on OpenShift, but I have played with uh, OKD just outside of my work. Uh, so that's the, the background here. And just to give you a background, I always like to show you know what what who you're talking to so we have some furry friends here and the story i like to to say is i was flying for work up to um toronto this is before covid and my dog thought uh, was very jealous that i'd be flying so she chewed my passport and if uh any of you had tried to uh, look into the details of flying with damaged uh ids um Damaged IDs are no good, at least in the U.S. The um, TSA does not accept them. So I had to do a same-day passport replacement. Um, buyer be, uh, beware for, for pups and owners or pups to keep valuable things like photo IDs and passports away from them. Anyway, today we're going to do OKD4 uh, on Overt. So hopefully that's what uh, you came here for, and we are going to do this live. I, I jokingly told Diane um, that my overt lab was was down uh, last week, and so uh, for hardware replacements. And so uh, for a moment, I actually went to uh, Packet. If uh, people are familiar with um, Packet. Mm -hmm. .net. They're an Equinox company. They have excellent bare metal. Uh, so I temporarily spun up over it in uh, Packet because they um, provide pretty cheap. It was about $2 uh, for the size instance that you would need. So if, if you want to try this at home, you can go into Packet and um, I can just briefly show you how you can spin this up, what you would need to spin up over on OKD. You'll be looking for their M2X large. They run about $2 an hour. I don't get paid for, for a packet, I'm just letting you know. Th this didn't work for me, however, for Overt because of the way that Overt uh, needs to do networking. Uh, there's certain uh, packet does uh, bonded network interfaces. I can actually show you that just so you know and, and can be aware. So these interfaces get bonded. So I wasn't, uh, and Overt needs to have a, uh, a VM guest network. So I wasn't able to go this route. I had to abandon it. So I had to go back to using and, and quickly spinning up my own um, hardware lab that I have. Uh, so that's what I'm showing you here. This is not on packet. This is actually uh, my own hardware that I use. And uh, I'll show you the, the version that it's running and stuff like that, because this is what we'll be um, deploying OKD to. So it's a version 4.3.10 of Overt. This is a, a CentOS 7 based um, Overt. So, <clears throat> and it's actually launch. It's actually launching OKD right now. That's what's going on in the background here. So we'll, we'll get to this in a minute. Um, but I just wanted to show you if you want to try this. Uh, see, there's a second master going up for OKD. If you want to try this, um, Packet might be an option if you don't have your own hardware, because Packet has uh, pretty cheap bare metal instances. You'll want to shoot for, per, you know, the, the minimum requirements, probably shoot for at least 256 uh, gig of memory. Um, we're going to slim it down a little bit today, but, but um, 
that th this lab, for example, doesn't have the minimum requirements that OKD is supposed to have. But let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to have to actually rewind um, because I have a deployment running. So can you, can anyone see the, is the text large enough on the could be It could be a little bit bigger for us with older bigger. eyes. Uh, just, <laughs> okay. just tired of eyes, not even older. That's <laughs> tired of I feel you. Okay, so I made it a little bit bigger. So there's a deployment currently running, but I want to uh, actually destroy this cluster because today uh, we're supposed to be live deploying OKD4, right? And I want to destroy it also to tell you a couple caveats that you'll have to have to know about OKD4 in order to get it running on your overt uh, virtualized system. So the first is, um, if you go into the documents, so that the documents, let me make that screen bigger as well. The documents for uh, OKD have, if you switch to version, uh, oh, see, this is already wrong. I'm, I'm on the wrong installer. That's the OpenShift installer. Go get to the right installation doc. There we go. I was comparing the OpenShift install doc to the OKD install doc, and there are some differences. So. I think a doc bug is in order. So here's the latest OKD for installing Rev quickly. This is what you'll want. This is the method that I've used before, before I had all of this uh, overt lab fiasco. Um, it, it's under docsokd.io, the, the usual stuff. Uh, so we're going to step through this today. I do want to share with you the diagram of what this is. If you're familiar with uh, any other virtualization environment, vSphere, basically you have multiple virtual hosts that will be running OKD4 in VMs. And so that's what this is describing. Uh, there are several things that you need to do in order to set this up, and there's at least one doc bug. So uh, Diane, talk about community. We, I, I may file the doc bug live with us here because I pounded away at some issues and I think it's just some documentation that needs to be changed. Oh, so. there's always documentation that needs to be updated, but thank you <laughs> the docs.okd.io for us. Thank you, much appreciated. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. So let me, um, I hate to destroy a cluster, but, let, but let's do it. Uh, so I'm actually gonna cancel out of this install. Now, if you're curious about what my, what I was doing there, you can see I was doing an OpenShift install. The installer is still called, for, for even for OKD, it's called OpenShift, even though we get it from the OKD uh, build uh, um, uh, release, but that doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you what it was. Now, I needed to destroy this cluster, and so um, let's see if that's actually in the doc about the the specific way to destroy the cluster. I always try to go by the document because if you reference something, then people always ask. Okay, so is it going to doc? No, it's not gonna document. Oh, wait, there it is, destroy. Destroy bootstrap, but not destroy cluster. Okay, anyway, it's destroy cluster. Oh, no, oh, sorry. It probably wants me to tell it the, the dir. So I created a directory, test three, and so it probably just wants me to specify test three. Oh, I bet I did not keep my install YAML, did I? So I may not be able to destroy this cluster, let's see. Okay, there it goes. So I used this directory to install because I had several different test installs running that had issues. So you can see now it's removing the VMs and whatnot. Now, just to show you that that was happening on what was happening on the overt side, you can see overt is saying removing VMs. Let me make that bigger for you. If we were to go into overt and up oh, re finish removing master one, yep. So it's cleaning out these um, VMs that OKD was created on, and it's actually leaving one around. It's leaving this bootstrap. And uh, you can destroy that with the uh, bootstrap command. 
you if you want to do it that way. Sometimes I just destroy the, the VM. It doesn't really matter. It's just a bootstrap node. So if I stop it and do a stop shutdown, we're going to destroy it. For those of you not familiar with Overt, this is basically the UI interface to it. Um, and then we're going to remove that. We don't need it. Any. Don't need. Okay. Let's get a clean install. Uh, this temp VM is interesting. I don't recall it in a previous install. Anyway, okay, so let's go through the installation and what you need. Let's actually run through the whole uh, document to install to overt so we can we can get to um, any issues that don't make sense to folks. Let's go back to the very top. So requirements. Uh, remember I said uh, that there were certain requirements to be met. Uh, for example, they recommend 230 gig on the docks of disk space. I'm running less than that, but I'm doing thin pool. So in the virtualized world for storage, you can do a thin pool back to VMs and get around uh, some of these hefty uh, install requirements. They also recommend 28 uh, cores. That's pretty reasonable. They do recommend here at least 112 gig of memory. Um, so those are the basic requirements. You can go to the main kind of dashboard of Overt and you can see that we meet most of those requirements. I have 140 some gig of free memory and I have uh, about 200 uh, gig of storage. So we might just barely be squeezing by on the storage. Back to the doc, what's required. It gets into step four. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in the document, but I, I, I'm going to step through because I want you to, to know the whole process and you know ask questions if, you, if the process doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So this, this curl command, what they're doing is they're just trying to get a, um, access to this engine, uh, this manager engine for Overt. They're just trying to get uh, a local certificate out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install from my local box here. Uh, so this is just my laptop. It's not running anything special. Um, but, you know, let, let's start from scratch. How about I do that? Let's let's just make a new directory. We're going to do live OK4 uh, install. Let's just go into that. And the first command it had was that, see, this is the, the docs do this wrapping. So the first command that they have is to try to get the REST API um, in order for you to uh, download the uh, PEM. Uh, now, I don't want to show you my password, so I, I, I hope you'll understand that I already did this. But the bigger point is to understand that there's this API endpoint uh, that you'll need to connect to, right? That's the bigger point. So that API endpoint is right here. And I could, I could tr try to do that with a curl if I did something like, let me get rid of this. URL here and append the API on the beginning and then ignore security and then it's going to pat, uh, prompt me for a password, right? And see, it's going to, let's see if it will let me do it this way. I think it's going to require, um, can I authenticate? Okay, hold on. I think it needs to have an hey, at you internal. Just, I'm just going to pause yep. you there for a second. Your terminal is kind of blurry. It's like it, you've got one thing in the background and. Oh, you don't like the, uh, yeah, the transparency. Well, okay. It could be my Let's eyes see. again, but you know. <laughs> I like the transparency because then I can see while I'm typing oh, notes behind. <laughs> no worries. I'll change okay, it. I don't, yeah. It might be just a preferences thing. Yes. No transparent background. How about that? Is that better? Yeah, the transparency is blurring things in the video. Although it, yeah, that's much better. Thank you. No worries. Okay, so uh, I did do the curl command, but I didn't in include the password. Just 
apps uh, security sake. So you can see all this gibberish is what the API returned. And that's what you want to see. You want to make sure that your command works. Uh, but this is the first thing that you'll notice is that over by default has this admin at internal uh, that's needed for the API in, in and that's not clearly documented. So if you bump into that, just just make sure you have the at internal. It is in our document uh, on OKD's website, but just make sure. Now the next uh, things, uh, and, and this verifies that whatever you're installing from has access to that overt manager that you should already be able to access. Now the next steps are uh, where you will make sure there's some free IP addresses on your network. Um, so this is assuming that you have access to like a subnet. Um, you, you will need to have three IPs uh, at minimum. Those are used for the um, DNS, the internal DNS that the, uh, the overt OKD uses, the OKD uses on overt. It is for ingress. That's the second IP is for ingress, and the third IP is for the API, the, uh, the Kubernetes API. So those are the three IPs. You just need to make sure that they're not uh, used, and you know, there's an ARP command to make sure that they're not used. The second thing is to make sure your DNS has got um, the two entries that are required now. So there's been some changes in which DNS entries are required, and this may have been talked about a little bit in the previous discussions, but it's been ramped down. We used to require, for example, and some installs still require etcd entries in DNS, uh, but the overt install does not require that. It just requires these two. So um, I put in uh, my, ones that I'm going to use are called api.okd4.lab. Let's see if that's going to return. Yes, so that's the API, and, I've returned, and, and DNS has this A record entry. So this is a nice test. Now, I had some issues with the DNS server that I'm, I'm using uh, for the apps, or what's used as the ingress. Um, I don't think it's uh, resolving correctly. I tried to fix this earlier. So we're going to see if my DNS server is cooperating, or we might have to stand up a new DNS server to complete the installation. Uh, but those are the only two DNS entries that are required. So that's good. Um, it, the, the third one, it makes a note that you don't actually have a DNS entry for it because it becomes the DNS server for the cluster. Next is the... Um, the the, the, the install dog jumbles around. So now we're back to the overt manager, the curl command that we issued before, and now we're actually going to get the um, certificate from it. So you'll notice that there is a certificate because this is an HTTPS connection, and that API back to overt uh, is gonna be communicated by the OKD installer. Uh, so we're going to have to trust that certificate somehow because it's going to be interactive. So what the installer is saying is you need to download that PEM, uh, or well, the certificate in a PEM format. So uh, that's what this does here. And if I just redo my previous command, uh, this shouldn't require a password. So I'm going to redo my curl command. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the password. It shouldn't need a password. Okay, yep, and I'm gonna get, whack the API, and instead we're gonna get the services, and I'm gonna output it to a uh, ca.pem. Oh, oh, I did not close my quote. Sorry about that. There we go. So now we have the pem file, and that's it looks pretty normal. There it is. Now the installer will take care of injecting that into the authentication mechanism for, for overt. I'll get to that in just a second because that can cause you uh, a, a heck of a lot of pain if it doesn't, if you don't get the pen file correct for this, for this uh, self-signed cert. Um, and then we change some uh, file permissions for that file. 
I don't know why it thinks it needs sudo. Aha, this is the first time it, it thinks it needs sudo. And quite frankly, I found out that anytime the install duck says use sudo, just don't. Um, and also I, I moved it to a different directory. I keep on doing sudo. I love sudo, but I'll show you in a second why it became a problem. Right, well, in a couple of minutes, we'll get to why it became a problem. Okay, and then I'm going to copy that PIM file that uh, came from the overt manager into the local anchors on my box. Uh, so let me just, now this may indeed require sudo because I'm sure this is owned by root, this area down there, the, that Etsy directory is probably owned by root. And then to update the uh, CA search, usually that is a super user that's required to do that. So we'll do that quickly. So now what's happened is the local certs on this, this box that I'm going to install from my laptop uh, locally trusts the overt uh, manager. Uh, so that was that whole process. And you'll see, I'll explain in the installer where that fits in and why you need to do that then. Uh, th the next part is an SSH key. Now the SSH keys are used um, mostly by folks, if you're familiar with OKD uh, or OpenShift, it's used to log in to the actual nodes. Uh, so the, as the core user, stuff like that. So the installer uh, needs it to be injected. I, I did this process before, but we can do it again uh, if you think that you need it, but this is a standard SSH generate a new key pair, run the agent locally, and then the installer can pick it up. I'm not going to run through that because I think most of us probably understand SSH and how to do it. But the point is um, either use a key or create a new key for the installer. That's all that is. Um, and pretty sure I'm still running my agent. Yep. Uh, so let's just make sure. running my agent still. Yep, I'm still running my agent, my SSH agent locally. Okay, so that's a lot of the prep work. We covered the SSH, we covered the uh, certificate for the overt manager, we covered the DNS entries, and we covered the IP addresses. That's kind of like the prep work. Now we get into the OKD installer. You'll, you'll get the installer from the standard releases. So, you can go to um, any of them that are listed here as assets on the main OKD releases. <clears throat> and I already installed this, uh, I downloaded this, but it's the 4.5 for Linux is the one I installed. Um, so I put that down, I put that in a previous directory I was using, that uh, OKD4 demo, I believe is where I dropped it. Let me make sure, yep. So I'm just going to quickly move it so I don't have to wait for my slow internet connection. Open shift install and move it into the current directory. And just so folks can verify that it is what it is, then there it is, 4.5 OKD, right, built on the 12th, so five days ago. All right, um, and you'll want the, uh, the CLI, but we'll do that later. All right, so got it, already got it um, locally. Uh, and I don't need to untar it because I already downloaded it. Now the pull secret, now this one's a little odd, okay? So when you click on, I'm gonna click on this link in the doc in a new private, you'll be prompted for a login. That's what, okay? So what do you do? Um, I don't know of a way around this, even though it redirects you to a Red Hat site, you're trying to install OKD. Okay, well, the, the way that I have found the easiest way to get around this is go to the developers.redhat.com site. Sorry if the URL is not big enough, um, but press login at the developers.redhat.site and create a new login, like log in with your GitHub account or something. That will create a developer account for you at Red Hat. And it will work with this pool secret. 
So again, go to the developers, create an account, and log in with that account to get the pull secret. Right. That's how to do that. Any, any questions about that? Because it doesn't really clearly explain how to get that pull secret. You do need an account with the Red Hat to do that. Uh, and there are questions, I guess since I'm a Red Hatter, I can go ahead and answer this, this question. There are questions about, well, what do you do with that information? Well, if your cluster is disconnected, uh, there's nothing that's being communicated between the two. Uh, you can run OKD and OpenShift disconnected. Um, but the way to generate a pull secret for you, we have to have an account in order to do that. So if you have any more questions, just ask one of us. Uh, okay, so I already downloaded my pool secret. Um, I put it into a different directory. I think it was that previous directory. Okay, the four overt. I downloaded, yep, I downloaded a pool secret. And that pool secret is valid for, I can't remember, 24 hours or it might be a couple days. I can't remember. So I'm just going to reuse it from this morning. All right, so now you have the pool secret and you have the OpenShift OKD installer from OKD 4.5. Now it's the time to install. This command will not work. Let me just restate that. This command in this doc will not work. So I'm going to show you, here we go with the, the doc bug. I'm going to show you what, what does work. If you were to run this command, Let's just copy and paste it. It's got it's got a line carriage, a rich, new line separator, but I'm going to get rid of that. Let's just try. Okay, it won't work. <laughs> Directory. Let's do log level info. Paste that. All right. Enter my duty privileges. Look at this, it's a nice little interface that prompts you for overt, sits there, sits there and errors, fatal. There's something about Terraform can't get uh, authentication to some admin internal, but you'll notice the admin internal again, so it makes you think, oh, it can't communicate with overt, there must be something wrong with my overt cluster. No, this is just a doc bug. Uh, so, if I rerun the command with, let's just try will work. If I rerun that command without sudo, it prompts me for my SSH key. Now, why it, the doc has you install the agent and then still prompts you for the public secure key and not entirely clear, and then we get prompted for which platform you select overt. Aha! So it actually pulls in some information, and it automatically detected the cluster name. Now, the reason I can tell it's communicating with overt is if we were to go back over to the manager of overt, and we were to look at clusters, that is the name of the cluster. So the OpenShift installer is pulling information out of overt. And let's look at storage. What is the name of, oops, sorry. What is the name of my storage? Let's look at domains for storage. Aha, hosted storage. So the, open, the OKD OpenShift installer is communicating with overt. And we can tell because it's dynamically pulling this information out. But the real question is, because I'm going to cancel out of this install, the real question is, why did this failure message happen? And it's all because of this document telling you to use sudo. Don't do it. And, and after we get an install working, I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna do a, a doc bug live with us. Don't, don't do sudo. It's gonna bypass it. I'm gonna show you exactly what it's bypassing. So here's, here's the bug. Um, the, the, the OKD installer needs to access over somehow. The way that it accesses it is it creates this file uh, under a hidden directory in your home directory, dot overt, and then overt. That, that comes from the uh, installer, the OKD installer. It doesn't come from overt. 
uh, let me see if I've got an old one here to show you. I don't want to show you my new one because it's got the, uh, a password in it. So I'll show you an old one and just so you can see the contents of it. See if I go up a level. Oops. I'll show you an old one of those. I copied it. Uh, okay, D4. Let's see if we do overt 43. Do we have an old overt? Here we go. Old. I don't care showing you the old one because it's not valid anymore. You can see in this file, it's actually literally calling that API endpoint. It's got the username and password, and it has a cert bundle, all generated from the, the OKD OpenShift installer. And <clears throat> for a while, the other reason I knew this was an issue is for a while, there was a separate bug where this file wasn't being created, or people were complaining that uh, they had multiple overt clusters and data centers, and they weren't connecting to new ones. It was just using old ones. And so the way that we got around that was to uh, delete this directory. So literally, if you, if you have any issues with this, you can delete this directory, and it will reprompt for all this information. So that's what I'm going to do. Recursively, of course. Yep. So if you have any issues connecting to your over cluster for the installer, blow away that directory uh, and try a uh, OpenShift install with the create instead of the create cluster. Here's here's what I would recommend. I would recommend the uh, create install config instead of cluster. It, it, this is good anyway, I'll show you why. It's not in the dock and it will still work in the dock, but here's why. So no sudo and do the install config. It will generate all of the required files. Again, select overt. And now you're being prompted for the API endpoint. Now that's where you have to enter in the overt engine. I'm having to copy and paste it because it doesn't it doesn't know it, it doesn't it doesn't have that file anymore. It needs an API endpoint. You can say that it's trusted, but it's still going to prompt you for the certificate bundle. Again, I'm not, if anyone knows why it prompts for that again, that might be an interesting thing to look at. Um, just a second, I need to copy this. Uh, oh, that's the pool secret. I need to copy my cert bundle just copy the cert bundle that it copied down i need to get into the right directory live okay the install now you can see that we're actually using some stuff see i need to copy and paste this cert that we downloaded again i i know it's part of the local trust but this is what it needs so two empty lines at the end this is a little weird you paste did that paste correctly? See, here we go with bad pasting. I, co I copied the begin certificate, but I don't see the begin certificate. We'll see. We'll see if it errors out. So you got to enter in two empty lines. Okay, there's the begin certificate. Admin internal is the standard, unless you've changed it. And then I'm going to enter my new password. And voila, you can see home lab cluster being accessed. So the, these prompts, these last five prompts, are creating that overt YAML so that it can communicate with overt. Absolutely critical. Um, and I think a, another thing to document may be to help people through this process if they, if they have issues here. Does, does that make sense? Any questions about how the installer is accessing overt? Did I bore everyone to tears with that? You did not bore anybody to tears. We're all just thrilled at your enthusiasm. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> there, was, there was an earlier question uh, Mike asked, uh, and we may, you may have answered it, but about the storage requirements um, that he's always seen each node should have 120 gigabytes. Any comments? 120 gig per node, I think is what he's referring to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how much of that is actually used on a node? Uh, 
I've gone down and I think I've seen as little as maybe 30 gig actually used. So if you set up the VMs as thin pool, then you can gradually, you know, that over, well, we're, you can grow that disk over time. That's the nice part of that. And you don't have to thick provision 120 gig for each node. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of a heavy, heavy requirement for those nodes. But yes, to get, to get full support from Red Hat, it's supposed to be 120 gig. But for OKD, yeah, use what you, what you have. We've been having emphasis today a little bit on the cheap side of things. Where can yes. we run the OKD the cheapest, uh, whether it's DigitalOcean or a cheap version of AWS? It's been a running theme, so thanks. Um, there was also a little bit of conversation about the pull secret use, and Charles was mentioning that he uses Quay.io account for that, and then uh, I think uh, ah. uh, Christian was okay. saying that you don't actually need full secret. Um, you can use fake. I think we did that in one of the other demos. We just fake it out. So how how do you how do you fake it out? Christian, you want to pipe in here? Because the Quate.io images, you'll still need to pull them down somehow. Are they are they entirely public? Let's see what he says. So I think the usual Quay, if they're public images, they don't need a pull request, a, a, a pull secret. Um, and the pull secret you, you have to add into the installer really is just for pulling the images from Red Hat. And in the case of OKD, everything's on Quay, so you don't need it. So you can really use oh. a fake one. So you can use, because we haven't disabled the functionality in our installer fork, because we didn't diverge from the OCP installer too much, um, you can really use anything in there. It just has to be a proper JSON blob with like field yep. auth and then one auth field. Um, yeah, what Charo just uh, pasted in the chat. Uh, but it could just, be, you know, it could be offs, it could be, and then, uh, you know, fake could be anything, then it has to have another field off, and in there it could be anything again. So, um, yeah. It's really I just... I, I, I got you. So, so do you inject that pull secret into, like, the install config YAML, and, and it could be just a standard Quade.io? Um, like, if someone were to go in with, with Quade.io... They just use it. Just oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You could put in your Quay.io one there, and then you could even pull, uh, if you if you change the, the payload references to a private image, you could use that with it. Okay. But you, you're not required to put it in or to put in a valid one for the OKD use case because all of our images are actually publicly pullable are actually without public. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The, the, the fake pull secret didn't work for me for mirroring. Uh, the And it's been a while since I tried it with the fake one again, so maybe it does work now. But that's why I started using my free Quay.io account. You, you can actually generate a Kubernetes pull secret um, from your profile in your Quay.io account. And those are free to set up. And, and, and that is probably because you're not using it as a pull secret then when you're mirroring. You're pulling, but then also pushing again to Quay. So you need your your own valid secret to pull to your Quay account. That, at least I would assume that. Oh, no, the, so yeah, push you... was, the push was to my Sonotype Nexus. So, so yeah, I did have to include a, a secret um, for my Sonotype Nexus too, so that it could push the images into the local registry. Okay, I yeah, I'd have to investigate why that didn't work, but that's actually kind of an open, an open thing right now we have to um, clean up a little bit because it's first of all it's annoying to to have to put that in there uh, the fake one uh, if it's not really used or needed if you put in the the normal red hat pull secret pull secret there um, okd will actually send telemetry to red hat as well um, it's not a lot of data but it's like a, a bit of data how healthy is the cluster there's no you know personal information, but some people may still want, may still not want that. Um, so we've definitely at least enabled folks to, to go without any, any, you know, calling back to Red Hat. 
uh, by using that. Um, we, we opted to not like, pull that like functionality it's... out completely um, to not diverge too much from the upstream from, yeah, from the installer. Uh, so, so at least on the, on the Red Hat side, I, I can't say entirely what, what's possible, but for like super secure customers who don't want any phone homing at all, one way to not do the telemetry is we have an entirely disconnected restricted cluster. So that involves not only the, um, the install is mirrored, but then uh, they might have a proxy that intercepts any outbound requests that the cluster is making. Um, and then it can't go back to Quay or Red Hat at all. Um, so that's, but you have, you have to extract everything, uh, the OpenShift installer and everything from the mirror. You can't, I saw some people that were doing it and they saw things still going, phone, phoning home. It's because they didn't extract everything from their local mirror. Um, I did notice something though, Mike, Mike Rocheford said that, I uh, asked, would the registry Red Hat IO images, um, you wouldn't have access to those Red Hat specific images. And that is that is true. You can enable that back into an OKD cluster. You could inject a, a Red Hat username, password, or token back into the cluster and you would have access to the Red Hat images. But yeah, the registry.redhat.io images, I think would, um, would you, you wouldn't have access to them without a login. Yeah, that, yeah that's right. Um, and that's also the reason we don't currently support the um, the bare metal IPI path because we don't have public images for those. Um, they're all rel based, so you need that pull secret. Um, and yeah, we, we've been trying to get the the IPI the bare metal folks to to release something um, either on top of CentOS or Fedora uh, to make that path, install path work as well. But yeah. Um, there's a few limitations. You won't be able to pull any any operators from Red Hat uh, or anything without the Red Hat pull secret. There's another question, Diana. I don't want to take over your no, that's okay. Scanning of the chat, but there was a ask about can you just do overt insecure and then don't have to worry about the CA cert. So a couple of months ago, back in the OKD 4.4 beta days, I did try that. Um, and if I remember correctly, it still didn't work. Uh, the installer would still fail out. I don't remember exactly where it would fail, but it, it um, I don't know if that's something to do. And maybe they changed it in the OKD 4.5 and they fixed it. You, so, uh, Ovid, you could retry that. It, it is an option, but it did not work for me. All right. So we have um, 10 minutes, which means we, we must have an install. Okay, so I'm going to move forward. Okay, so we're going to select the storage. Uh, and I'm actually going to select this overt management. That's not what you're supposed to do, but I currently have an issue in this lab with the, uh, the typical VM subnet. Anyway, uh, we'll get it around that. Now, um, these are the three IPs that are need to be reserved that I talked about earlier. So I know what those are off the top of my head. Uh, they're in the 10 and API is, actually, let me make sure. I, I said I knew, but I, I probably don't really remember. Is there, did I see this? Two ones. Is it, re, is it not returning an IP for me? Oh no, did my, my router fork supposed to be there? Did I typo something? OKD okay, 4.lab supposed to be there. What about int? Is it there as well? Or is this not? Well, Something just changed. Let me. Uh, I, my lab uses. Oh, oh, syntax error. What did I change? I shouldn't have changed anything. Try to restart. 
I'm using it in this lab. Uh, I just have pfSense running with it, with Unbound as the DNS. And I, I obviously made a change right before I went live with you all, so apologies about that. Um, okay, resend it. Okay, while that restarts, let's move forward because that's the IP that's going to have to be is the one, uh, the 199 is what it's supposed to be. Let's move forward. 199. TNS is supposed to be the 197 is what I had reserved, and the ingress is supposed to be the 198. I just bunch all three IPs together, make it easier for myself. And lab is supposed to be the base. Okay, D4 is supposed to be the cluster name. And here we go with the, the pull secret. I'm actually going to use my actual pull secret that I got, but nice that we have these options. That's really, I, I want to try the Quay.io option uh, so that's not to have to log in. Uh, to Red Hat. Thank you for that. That was awesome. Okay, I'm going to insert that. Oh, wait. What? Oh, I had a typo. So we have some validation going on. Well, that's good. Did I really typo that? Oh, yeah, I did. No one caught it. I, I was typoing. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that's what happens when you do things live. That's how you know that it's real. And we distract you by asking questions. No, 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 it's all good. 199. And let's type it correctly this time. If we go over a little bit, don't worry about it. Well, I, I'll at least get the VM starting up in overt. That, that, that should happen. That shouldn't be a problem. All right. So it generated our install config. Oops, will work. Right. Voila. So now what I want to do is just start. Now, the, the reason I showed you that is because I wanted you to see that it really did create this hidden directory that you'll want to just verify the contents of uh, so that you can get your overt uh, working. But now I'm going to run the OpenShift install create uh, cluster using our directory will work, being optimistic. And I just like to set some info level. So it's consuming the install YAML. It should go a little bit faster. Okay. Ah, it use, it's using a cached image. Okay, good. That's from my previous attempt. So it's already using CoreOS 32. That's cached locally. That's good. All right, so now it's going to make the calls out to Overt. And we should eventually start to see the manager. If I go to VMs it will eventually start creating uh, VMs there in overt. Yep. And I think as soon as it, we'll have to wait a couple of minutes for it to start creating the VMs, but we have what, six minutes left, Diane? Anything yeah. else? Any oddball? Yeah, you can, you can go a little over. Everybody's run a little bit over today, so don't worry if you, if you need it. <laughs> We, we, we well, I'm to... thinking if if I've done so, see this error is still here in my DNS server. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's not supposed to be there. Is that there? We do like proof of life. <laughs> Living on the edge. I was uh, futzing around with my DNS server right before the, the call today, and I wonder what just happened. Else. Hmm. I, and my DNS server is going to have to stay up for the OpenShift install to actually make a call out. Let's see, is this still running? No, okay, good. Well, that's cached probably, but. Um, sending a request. Mm. Open this again.
that's doing. Hmm. Very slow. Something's going on. Well, yeah, the gerbils are running. Well, that kind of latency is not good. Um, okay, well, unless my router starts to crash, I do want to file that uh, doc bug. So I, I do have a question. What's the best way to file a doc bug against OKDs? Is it there in the installer? Does it say contact us somewhere in here? Because ASCII binder was used. So Christian, where, where would you like him to log this? For the don't use sudo, and also how to troubleshoot uh, overt uh, I think connectivity. We've been opening most of the issues on the OKD. Um, issue. Yeah. Project. I was going to say, just open open any issue you find on the OKD, OpenShift slash OKD in the OKD repository, um, and we'll we'll work out how to find the proper place for it and, and uh, refer it there. So you could file a live a live issue. <laughs> I just want that a sudo removed. I don't remember it being there before. Uh, okay, so OKD. Document still referring to okay. D. Okay, so I'll tag it as doc, kind documentation. Oh, okay, I can do that. There you go. And and you know what? That's almost a great way to end a um, a live demo on is filing an issue because it's a wonderful community thing to do. And um, well, well, well I, I really wanted the VMs to start coming up and before we we totally signed off. That's okay. So we may bring you back again um, to do this another day. Give, give, give me five minutes. How about that? I'll, I'll give you five minutes. Absolutely. And just tell uh, Walid and um, Joseph, who are logging in now, that we're going to be about five minutes late. And so just take a breather. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Okay, cool. Hey, Joseph. We'll blame Justin for our demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for messing everything up. Hi. <laughs> so while he's doing that, I will make a pitch again um, in the chat. So if, if you're listening in today and you want to get involved in the OKD working group, um, please, um, you can go to okd.io and find all the links there too, but you can also just go direct to um, well, the groups, Google, Google Groups for OKD Working Group and join in there and post any questions. That's also where I will be posting the links as the videos from today go up. So that's another reason to join there. And then um, the Fedora calendar is the other place you can go to um, find out when we are meeting to chat about stuff um, and to work on things collaboratively with the Fedora community and others. Um, so please do check out and sign up for our calendar. Yeah, maybe I can. Uh say a few words on on our roadmap again right now because i'll have to drop soon okay. uh but yeah as long as uh keep, keep just filing the bug keep filing the bug fig and figuring out um things so uh, yeah we it's just um hooking into we want to collaborate um and we we really do want to collaborate as the working group with not only the fedora community but all the communities that are interested in or all the individuals that are interested in joining in and so what we've planned is um, to work closely with the with the operator um, SDK team to and and all the the people that develop the operators to get them to release their operators in a way that it works on OKD 
and also um, we want to revive, um, well, that, that is again Fedora, a, a little bit more Fedora specific, revive the container special interest group um, in Fedora to make more Fedora based containers, which will obviously run well on Fedora CoreOS um, and make those the basis for some operators too. Um, yeah, and so anything, any any community you can think of, uh, please do invite them to our working group meetings and also individuals uh, that may want to contribute. Um, we, we're really interested in, in growing this um, in a collaborative way and just in general making making what we've been showing today even more seamless. So it's we're already at a really great point where all these platforms work very, very similarly. So the installation process is almost the same on all of them. And we really want to get that even more, make that even more seamless and just, uh, yeah, improve on, on, on all, all, all the things. So that's just me saying again, uh, please join the working group and uh, bring your folks as well. Yeah. And, and Mike, you were asking about um, the, the container SIG meetup. I haven't seen any action on that. I have been um, on vacation for a couple of weeks, so I haven't looked, but we were going to try and spin that group up again or get them to spin themselves up again so we could participate with them. So um, I'll check back in with them and see if we can't get something going with the Fedora container SIG group. How are we doing there, Justin? It is working. So uh, the VMs for the masters are coming up. Uh, they're, so they're booting core OS and they're starting the, the bootstrap uh, had already come up. And I also filed that uh, doc bug. So right under time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all uh, for for giving me a couple of minutes to to share this with you, and um, it really is awesome to to see the progress here. I mean, we really didn't even have much to install with Overt until 4.4, so this is really awesome. So there's one last question for you from Aaron, um, who's asking, is the lab storage on SSD? Ah, so uh, this lab storage actually has spinning Rust with an SSD in front of it. Um, so it has a, a, an LVM, a DM cache to accelerate. I guess people call that an accelerator in storage world. Um, yeah, you, you can't survive um, any of the etcd requirements if, you're, if you don't use at least SSDs. I think that is made mention of in here in the document. You click on this etcd backend performance requirements. Um, there'll be a link to some testing that some IBM folks did and what the Kubernetes folks uh, said for requirements. Uh, and the general consensus is you can't get to that kind of speed with uh, without at least SSD or NVMe. Good question. Well, thanks again. All right, Diane. Yes, thank you. I, I totally, my hat's off to you. My red hat somewhere behind me is off to you. <laughs> taking on the challenge today. Uh, we've got a new challenge coming up here. I'm just gonna pause the recording for a second so we can have this in.